I, I'm really excited because I've got today with me Sidal Darbovsky, CEO of OpenGrants.io. Um, and Sidal, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So why don't we just start with a little bit of introduction? Um, tell us the story of Open Grants, a little bit about your background, how you got started. Sure. So, um, I mean, I guess the, the longer version is um, I started my sort of career um, as a entrepreneur, just building like websites and random things for people, um, but ended up building a, a consultancy um, and ended up going to work for uh, a much larger firm called Momentum, where they managed you know, a $6 billion portfolio of blended capital projects, about a billion of which was grant funding. And I got super fascinated with that. And so I um, had this vision of making kind of a common app for grant funding. And that's when um, I kind of pitched Open Grants to the team there. And we spun Open Grants out of the Momentum X Accelerator Venture Studio. And so that's, um, yeah, that's how we ended up here. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff in between, much longer story, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll probably get to that um, here in a couple of minutes. So tell us more about your platform. Who does it serve? Um, how do you work with funding seekers and grant makers? And um, what has surprised you the most since you launched? I think, um, well, uh, I'll answer the last question first. I think the most surprising thing about this space is still that it's just so very, very relationship driven. Um, and there's, you know, for all of the great systems and technology at the end of the day, um, it's very much about kind of human beings and building these relationships with people uh, and and working on really cool stuff. I mean, one of the thing that attracted me to this space in the first place is, you know, grant funding is very altruistic and impact focused. And it's all about creating changes or or innovations in, sp in the space, you know, in whatever space the, the grantor is interested in. And so there's still a lot of just human kind of mechanisms moving the space along for as much as we'd like to, you know, platform everything and have it be so efficient. Uh, there's a lot of people to consider along the way, um, which is really cool. And open grants, you know, historically what we've done is allowed people to create a profile and then match them to grant funding and then match them to experts who can help them secure that funding. And on the other side of the table, we've worked with funders to make sure that their stakeholders understand what kind of funding is available and when it's available and how they can access it. And one of the exciting things that we've been working on is more of kind of agentic sort of AI approaches to driving a lot of this stuff forward. But at the end of the day, like I said, it is about people. And so we do specialize in, in really connecting human beings to other people who want to make stuff happen in the world. And uh, you mentioned that, you know, you've been an entrepreneur, um, you've kind of had an entrepreneurial journey. So what has been the most unexpected um, challenge that you've encountered, uh, specifically being CEO of Open Grants? And how has that shaped your approach to leadership and innovation? Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the things that um, you start to realize is that there's you no know, a, a shovel is a shovel at the end of the day. So tools are tools. You can build tools all you want. And it's nice to give people nice tools, but it really is about making impact and creating, you know, creating things for people that they're interested in using. And at the end of the day, like I said, there's a lot of just human beings and human beings involved. So it's a lot about relationships. And, you know, I don't think, I think that the techno sort of early adopter optimist in me slash, you know, just entrepreneur has always thought about and really enjoyed the efficiency of systems and platforms, like huge fan of like DoorDash. And I just, bought a car from Carvana and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I just like type the things and put in my <laughs> card and then this thing shows up in my house. It's so good. But there's there's a bunch of human beings involved in, in all this stuff. And so I've gotten more and more interested over the course of open grants in particular in just how we, you know, optimize for that like experience of all the people uh, along the way. Yeah, I like that because it's it's a refreshing take um, coming from somebody who's built a tech platform. Uh, to focus on the relationship side of it, because in my in my in my job in BD and partnerships, people are at the forefront of it, right? Technology kind of takes a backseat, so it's nice to 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 hear people who are building the tech are also thinking about those kind of things. Um, so let's um, let's switch gears to the you know the industry itself. 
What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions um, founders and entrepreneurs have about securing grant funding? And how do you address those uh, through open grants? Yeah, I mean, I think the big one is probably that it's free money, which it is really cheap money, but there's like a big opportunity cost. And I think the other one is that these systems that prop themselves up and show, you know, kind of outwardly signal that it's sort of a merit-based only process really are deeply influenced by humans again. And so a lot of founders and other people get frustrated because they apply for grant funding and they don't get accepted. And then they see other people getting grant funding. They're like, what did we do that, you know, you know, we're way better. Like, look, you probably didn't show up at the public meetings. You probably didn't work with the program officers. They probably didn't know who you were. And so they didn't, it, it's not like people are colluding, but they they definitely, you know, it's just like raising capital from, from VCs. Like they're not just going to like, if you cold email them there, you're much less likely to get a response. Whereas if you get a warm introduction, you're much more likely to be successful. And, and it's the same for grant funding from the government and from foundations. Um, I think the other big one is that grant funds are for nonprofits only. Um, that's the other big one that we talk about all the time is that not only is there a ton of I mean, billions of dollars in grant funding for for-profit companies, but there's also really interesting innovations we have in the United States, at least, for uh, nonprofits to be able to give to for-profit companies. And those look like fiscal sponsorships and other kinds of uh, other kinds of like reporting and, and tax um, just kind of mechanisms to make that happen. And uh, and so I think a lot of people just forget or don't realize and, and make those assumptions and then don't find success getting grants. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned, obviously, it's really important to, to, to be uh, in, uh, in front of the people, face to face with the people who are making these decisions and find the right opportunities to engage with them. Um, but how important along with that is it to kind of have for startups to have a strong narrative and 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 what role do you um as open grants play in that if at all yeah i mean often it's important that you communicate clearly and effectively although i will say that there are a lot of just relationship based opportunities in the space again so that can or cannot be a differentiator i tell people all the time that if you communicate as well as everyone else who communicates, or even a little better, you're still just on the same footing as everyone else, which is to say that you follow the directions just like everyone else, and there's hundreds to look at. The differentiator is often the relationship that you bring to the table. Obviously, if you submit something incoherent that's just unintelligible, then you're going to have a problem. But if you do a really good job writing, the magic is less in the writing and more in how you arrived there, which is important, right? So there's a there's a really important nuance in the fact that like grant writing itself is the output of ideally a lot of good strategic work of, of meeting with that funder, of going to meetings, of understanding their needs and working with your stakeholder ecosystem if you're doing a larger project and understanding their needs and engaging with a large group of, of individuals who are involved in your in your project potentially. Um, and so the grant itself, like what you submit, it's a thing. It's a, like a marker. It's a deliverable, but it, it it's not like the thing. Really, the thing is all the other work that's gone to put that together. Um, and that's why, I mean, for a long time, and I continue, you know, saying this, like, I, I think in the future, in the near future, in the next few years, we'll get to a point where we don't like submit these crazy narrative applications. We just connect people and let them sort some things out. And then we're just submitting and pushing data back and forth in order to make these awards. But yeah, you know, there's a definitely a baseline of like, you need to be able to communicate and follow directions. Uh, but the real differentiator happens beyond that. What are, what are some ideas you have there for people who are seeking fund, funding? Yeah, a lot of what we do at Open Grants is help people understand not only what's happening in the world, but also how to compete and the core idea that we put forth is really just one of searching for really like deep alignment and making sure that you are not trying to like twist yourself into some pretzel to fit somebody else's vision. I tell people all the time that like there's a there's a there's like a lid for every pot is a saying, right? That exists in the funding space, right? Like if you want to like, you know, run businesses that recolor dog fur like you could do that right like uh, there's there's right. a flavor there's a funders who are interested in every flavor of everything you can imagine 
And so the, the mistake we see people make a lot is trying to apply for a opportunity that like fix, fits them tangentially maybe, but is not like a perfect fit. And really it's just a case of finding that funder that deeply aligns with your vision for the future and, and the world. And so it's really important to just do that. So how does that, how does that alignment come to the forefront? How do you enable that alignment? Like that whole idea of finding alignment, we start with the words, right? We're like, all right, what are you putting out there in the world? What are they putting out there in the world? And we use embeddings and AI to like mash those things up. But the next step is is really we connect you with someone who really knows that funder. And that's where Open Grants, again, we are kind of indexing around this human thing of like, Let's connect you with someone who knows that funder who can help you strategize about it. And that might be groups like the Environmental Protection Network, who's incredible. Um, they do incredible work. Uh, we're really proud to have them on the platform. It could be freelancers um, who just know like one program really well. Um, but we've organized that ecosystem so that you can not only connect, you know, and do that sort of like initial, like, oh, we think this is a good one. We flagged it for you. We gave you that match. But then we also connect you with with people who can help you, you know, go a little bit deeper. Uh, but the idea is, hey, let's turn, you know, this universe of opportunities into like 10 or 20 that make a lot of sense and help you focus down and maybe even narrow down to like two or three that you're just going to like focus on and get after. I'm just curious, do you work directly with uh, grant makers also? Um, you know, with the, it sounds like there's a very engaged experience for founders and entrepreneurs on the platform. What does that look like on the other side of the house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as luck would have it, you know, foundations and other groups need support deploying their capital. I mean, so we have a big database of obviously people who are interested in money. And so we try to be matchmakers. Uh, we have an API that we provide to funders where they can access that. So if founders and other folks who are looking for funding on the platform opt in, then we will share that data. Most people do. And then we'll share that data with those foundations and, and groups looking for funding. And then we can help them understand like, oh, well, do you, are you interested in people working on climate? Are you interested in what have you? We can kind of help them cut through and look at like cohorts based on themes or locations or other data that we collect. Yeah, that's, you know, we, we try to interact and support the deployment of capital as well. Have you, um, uh, have you worked with maybe entrepreneurship support organizations, startup support organizations, ecosystem builders, um, you know, trying to sort of build innovation and entrepreneurship capabilities within their regions? What does that engagement look like? We are first and foremost a technology company. And so we have provided our API to different organizations like that. And we have groups that have white labeled our platform to provide it to, uh, you know, their startups or, the, or their ecosystem. Another way is that we will just simply host and like pre-sell credit to the Open Grants ecosystem, right? So some orgs will reach out and they're like, yeah, we don't really have an appetite or just don't need, you know, a white label or just not interested, but we, we want your services and we would like to prepay so that our startups can access your, your services and, and use it. So there's there's different ways, but those are the two main ones we engage with is you know, either providing the API and some kind of software or simply pre-selling or, or providing some kind of discount to that to that group. Because I think those companies kind of focus on non-dilutive investment and, and you're really not only doing the non-dilutive investment, but you're actually enabling access to, to different sources of capital. I'm particularly passionate about is, you know, this is my fourth venture-backed company that I've founded and it's... Uh, you know, something I wish I'd learned a lot earlier in my career is just how to use your capital stack in, in a really efficient and effective way. And there's a lot of different ways to raise capital, of course. And so I do think like one of the things that I'm particularly excited about is just making founders aware that like this is a thing. You know, I wasn't aware that grants really existed, honestly, until I ended up, you know, selling one of my companies to, uh, you know, to Momentum and going to work there and then be like, oh, there's all this grant money all over the place. And uh, what are your, what are some of um, Open Grant sort of um, ideas and strategies around leveraging DAFs or enabling, you know, access to DAFs? We have found a lot of interest from like capital allocators who are super interested in just like using that as a way to de-risk their venture portfolios. The other thing that I think is really compelling and interesting for us as a company is that we have a really great database of folks who have started to opt into our Common App. So our Common App really just enables us to quickly and efficiently share 
data about people who are interested in capital grants in general, but also other kinds of capital with funders. And so we do see kind of a long-term and very exciting play where we can, you know, help power some of this ecosystem. And we have other folks who are kind of helping wrangle, wrangle some of that. So, yeah, I think, you know, for us, what's, what's really exciting here is the idea that all of these kinds of capital are coming together. Um, I do, again, you know, I'm very bullish on this idea of like a, just a single front door, right? Like I, it's so frustrating having to go from one place to another and like one database to another to find like funding and to, you know, find different types of funding and you go different places for debt. And there's some very cool players out there that have started to consolidate all of this into a single space. We've been really excited by what Mercury Bank is doing. Um, You know, I don't know if you've seen what they have on, on their platform, but they have like, it's a, you know, a banking experience that they're delivering. They're not a bank, but they're providing this financial technology and in their dashboard, they have this cool thing where you can like look for other kinds of like funding that's related to, you know, so you can look at venture debt and these other products. And I, I think the industry is headed in a really exciting space where founders will be able to really quickly and efficiently access all kinds of different capital from a single application. What are your thoughts about, uh, you know, decentralized finance and blockchain technology? How do you see some of those innovations impacting the traditional, um, you know, grants and funding processes? No, oh, man, there's just so exciting. I, I I think adoption is, you know, obviously a little bit slow, the enterprise space where it'll be really meaningful. But yeah, you know, we have everyone from the federal government on down in terms of funders who have a really hard time tracking where their money goes. And blockchain and crypto rails uh, with like a chain explorer are, you know, notably just an incredible technology for being able to track all that. And then when you think about how that translates to the burden of reporting on your grants, like what you've done with your grants, and if you can extend that system downstream, all of a sudden you can just automatically roll up your report and deliver that to the funder. And the funder could always understand where the where the funds have gone and what they've done. Um, it's very exciting. And I just, you know, uh, anyways, I think there's huge opportunities there. So that's one thing just from like a reporting and, and transaction tracking standpoint. The other exciting thing that we have experimented with and unfortunately just have not had the time to pursue, honestly, the market hasn't quite been there for us, but for, for this particular thing, but just the idea of moving money in a timely fashion for, for, for people, right? So you have the federal government who can take as long as six months sometimes to deliver funds after they've awarded a grant. Um, other groups that move, you know, fairly slow, like 30 days. Uh, and then, you know, you have USDC and again, crypto rails and crypto in general, where literally like if I decided to send you money to your Coinbase wallet right now, I could do it and it would be there. And it would, as soon as I click the button, it basically would show up. And so, yeah, I, I think there's huge opportunities to move this ecosystem on chain. I think there's the, the technology is definitely matured a bit and there's more players. One of the early challenges we had, because we did some experiments on the space early on was like, there weren't enough really good and efficient on-ramps and off-ramps for crypto. And then there just wasn't enough like ecosystem in the places that we needed to deploy capital to do it. And so now there's, you know, there's some really incredible opportunities. And the last piece of the puzzle that I think is really interesting is like looking at countries that are adopting and kind of moving towards more of like a crypto native kind of economies where they're doing some really interesting technology leapfrogging, where the banking infrastructure is so bad or the currency of the country is so devalued that they're just adopting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to like make make things happen. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And we've seen like technology leapfrogging happen in countries that, you know, the UAE famously, right? Like they never had never had phone lines because they just got to like, they skipped around to mobile phones. And so there's never like, there's just no ugly phone lines all over the place. And uh, so that's something like globally that I'm super excited about. And I think is really neat is the idea that you have some economies that are just going kind of natively crypto. And then you have the opportunity for just such efficiencies of transactions as well as reporting that you could really reduce like so so much of the burden, uh, but also so much of the fraud and waste and abuse um, that happens in this space by putting things on chain and making sure they go to the right people. And so speaking of people, I know that that's sort of been, you know, um, a key theme and a key thread from throughout our conversation as one of your big um, sort of insights when you stepped into the funding space is the people. So what do you 
uh, do you, what do you think of the surge of sort of public private partnerships and innovation funding? And do you see kind of this trend of, you know, having different stakeholders and obviously different um, people from different backgrounds, whether it's the federal government, universities, um, research foundations, how do you see that influence the future of, uh, you know, grant access for founders and entrepreneurs? Yeah, I mean, I'm very, you know, thrilled to see like work like, you know, NSF's engines programs and these other like big kind of movements. Um, obviously, the Inflation Reduction Act, super exciting. Um, you know, Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, super exciting. All this money just kind of pouring into these communities. I am cautiously optimistic that good things will come from this. The the part of me that has watched, you know, the federal government misspend and like poorly allocate capital is also very nervous because there were not like a ton of guardrails behind some of these programs. But yeah, I think overall it's going to be a net benefit, right? Like you can't, it's, it's like what happened during COVID, right? Like California spent a ton of money, a bunch of it went to fraudsters and they're like kind of okay with it because they need to get money out the door and make stuff happen. And, uh, and I think that's, you know, unfortunately, like with the systems we have, that's just going to be a reality. But I, I do think there's tons of opportunity. You know, if you look back at how Silicon Valley happened, it was because the federal government got involved and started spending a bunch of money on defense Right. Um, and so I, I know that that's always been like this dream that's floated around DC and, and government. They're like, oh, how do we, how do we do that again? <laughs> like, how do we, how do we sort that out? And uh, there's a great book by Margaret O'Mara oh, called The Code. Oh, I love that book. It's, yeah, it's great. Right. And I like, think what the, the making of some Silicon Valley, I think, or something yeah, along but those Margaret lines. O'Mara. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. It's so good. I think that, uh, I think they're searching for that again, right? Obviously. Um, and I think if we do it right, you know, then we will get that, right? Like, it'd be cool to see 10 Silicon Valleys pop up around the country, around these engines programs and see, you know, the innovation happen. So we'll see what happens, you know, but it's definitely an opportunity. And I think that I am, I am encouraged when I meet with folks, like there's an incredible team that's working on, you know, a new API for grants.gov and, like I, I'm encouraged when I meet with our public servants and meet with government and they seem to be excited about this. They seem to be driving it in the right places and they seem to be more open than they've been in the past to just innovation and new technology, which is exciting. And so, yeah, I think, you know, I think it remains to be seen exactly what the opportunity is overall. But one thing I think that founders should be aware of to just sort of depart a bit from the grant sp spot is that a lot of the money is also like kind of towards procuring, like buying technology, which I think is a really exciting opportunity for founders to shift from like the grant space, like, oh, I can go get government contracts. Um, you know, and grants are government contracts. At the end of the day, they, they become a contract if you get a government grant. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's, I think there's a lot of opportunity for sure right now. And um, I'm excited to see how it all plays out. I think Unfortunately, there's a lot of it that's fairly undefined at the moment, too. It's just new, you know, so we'll see what happens. So have you seen any um, through your engagement, um, you know, with public servants, with with government organizations? Have you seen any um, engagement around public policy and how that might be shaping given the new sort of, um, you know, funding landscape that we're entering? And especially with the focus on innovation, entrepreneurship um, over the last couple of years. Yeah, I, a lot of what's happening right now has been the result of like, it's so funny. So like public policy and these sort of decisions happen and then we get like the effects like years later, right? And so what we're seeing right now is some very good work that's been done by smart people and good bills, right? Like, so, you know, the fact that California has their own grants.gov to, you know, have all of the government grants in a single place that's searchable and easy to access Fantastic. You know, that was a bill that was passed a few years ago, and they're just now implementing the results of that. And that's just normal kind of government speed. Um, and so seeing like the GAO put out a report that just said, hey, like the grants are too burdensome. Like we, we passed some paperwork reduction policies and like there's been some good you know public policy that has reduced the reporting burden, reduced all these things and opened up opportunities for us to do more things efficiently. And we're continuing to see that process happen, right? Where there's a whole effort right now to reduce 
you know, how terrible RFPs look, right? It's like an 80 page dense PDF. They're, they're reimagining that whole thing. And that's thanks to, you know, good public policy. Uh, the U.S. Digital Response put out, uh, I believe it was them, uh, put out a really good report recently about midway through last year, I believe, basically saying, hey, there's no front door for government grants. And this is a real problem because, you know, they basically took all of like this information that we all knew anecdotally and put it together and like put actual numbers on it. Right. I'm just saying like, hey, people are really like way like this is terribly inefficient it's like a detriment and a drag to the economy and it's making us less competitive as a nation and blah 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 and it's re all really important stuff so i think that from a public policy standpoint we continue to like we continue to be aware of how terrible things are mm -hmm. and we're just working through the process of fixing them uh, you know by design it's not quick and i do think that's where there's some opportunity for entrepreneurs as well is to like bring innovation to government so that they have the tools they they need to like you know solve some of these problems that are quite complex at the end of the day but yeah I, you know there's been good public policy that has created some some ramps to fix some of these things and i'm excited to continue to see that and i hope that you know, we have an election coming there's all kinds of opportunities to sort of continue to assert that and this is not like a political plug it's just to say that like, if you want stuff like this to happen, that's, that's why you get involved and you go vote. Like it is like, you know, this, the stuff that's ha the policies and things that have been passed and like put in place in years past are what are driving these opportunities now. So if you like that, then like, you know, figure it out. And go vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think, I mean, that's, a, that's a great note to end on. And just one more question here. If you could see one major change in the grant funding ecosystem over the next five years, what what would you want it to be? If you had a magic wand, and what, what oh, would man. that be? I mean, I and I hope we actually see this, which is just a, a common app for, for funding. Mm -hmm. Like, just like there's countries where you don't have to file taxes and instead you get sent a thing and you're like, this is your taxes. Tell us if we did it wrong. Like, we definitely have the technology to do that on the tax front. Like, we can, we can do that with grants, too. Like what we should have is a system that when you incorporate your company, you fill out some information and you just get matched to funding and then you can opt in to like receive that money or not. Or you can at least like have just one place where you store that and that gets syndicated out and used across federal, state, local grants. And then, you know, that's, you know, I'm speaking specifically about government grants at the moment, but I do think like properly architected that could also extend to funders who could join that ecosystem and leverage that data. So yeah, that's what I'd love to see is a common app where, you know, open grants becomes irrelevant as a, as a place to find people and a place to find grants and instead becomes, you know, our vision has always been to be some of the technology that can enable that. And so, yeah, I'd love to see us completely pivot our business model to just be like the technology provider of that common app. But regardless, I would love to see that common app. Exist. I don't care how it exists, honestly. If it could exist, that would be beautiful. And then we'd love to make it happen, of course. And that's a wonderful vision uh, to end on. Thank you so much, Sadal. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you and getting to learn more about the work that you're doing and all the best with everything. And, and um, hopefully we'll see the, you know, we'll see that all those changes and every, all the exciting things we talked about happen very soon here. So thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure.